What's up guys, this is Scooter here with Macintosh Tips, and today I'm going to showcase some of the new features they have in Safari 4. Now Safari 4 is one of the updates to Apple's uh, main web browser Safari, uh, so you're probably using Safari 3, but this is Safari 4. Uh, now Safari 4 is predicted to be one of the fastest web browsers alive, alright, on the face of the earth, which is pretty much, uh, for the beta, it's very fast, and I'm surprised at how fast it is. It hasn't crashed once on me, which is good, so I recommend you guys download it. But let me go ahead and show you some of the new features to get you more interested in it. Uh, let's go ahead and go to some of the small things they have, but the small things really do help. Uh, they have enhanced the Google uh, Google bar. At first, they didn't give you suggestions, uh, it, or, it, or sometimes um, auto-filled what you wanted to say because you've researched it uh, in the past, but now it suggests what you want to say. So if I want to say, um, let's say FedEx, all right, if I type in F-E-D, FedEx automatically pops up here, and now I can click it, and now I'm Googling FedEx. So it has enhanced the Google bar, uh, which is very, very cool. And then it also has my past searches, so if I'm on another website and I want to go back to FedEx, I just go all the way down here, and it says recent searches, and now I have FedEx. Again, so that's very, very cool. All right, let me go ahead and show you another thing they have. Uh, one more thing they have, which is very, very big, is uh, the cover flow and history. Now, as you may know, when you're searching other websites or you're looking, researching a paper and you go to different links, and then you go back for, to searching your history and you don't know which one it is because you haven't memorized a website, now they've introduced cover flow and history, which means there is an image of the website you went to. So now you can identify that website, easily click on it, and you're back to the website. Which is very, very cool. Alright, so as you see, I'm just browsing in CoverFlow of all the websites I've been to in the past couple days here while using Safari 4. And I've just been on random YouTube pages, random YouTube videos, websites, things like that. Alright, as you see, I'm just browsing through, and it takes a little bit for it to come up, the uh, image. But when it does, it's very, very speedy. Alright, and as you see, I'm just browsing through, and this looks very, very stunning. It's reflective. I mean, Alright, let's go ahead and talk about top sites. Now, this is one of the main things they have. Sometimes when you're on the website, or on Safari, or on the internet, you visit some of the same websites three, four, maybe even five times constantly a day, just going back to that website, going back, maybe even more. And uh, Apple has took the time to make it in Safari to notice this, all right, because it has noticed that I visit Facebook, Hulu, YouTube, The Onion, my school, YouTube, all those websites frequently, and it's called it my top sites. And I go here to this button right in the top, all right, and pretty much uh, I go here, all right, and all my top site pictures have gone. And now I can just click on the image, and now it refreshes the page for me, even if something's updated. It refreshes the page, all right, and so I'm now here on my Apple space. If I want to go back, I just click this button, and now I'm back. And I can even have more than this. I can go to edit down here, and I can rearrange, which is very, very cool. And I can even go to medium and have more websites pop up. I can even go to small and have even more websites pop up. Now let's say I've been on John Forlager's website or YouTube page, and I've been on there for several hours just looking at all his videos. That'll change to one of my frequent sites, which is pretty cool, I guess, because let's say I need that. I'm working on a history project, and that website I've been on. So it's very, very cool, very, very sleek uh, interface you got here, and I really, really like it. And I can go back down here to large and make uh, the website images bigger. So that's very, very cool they have here. And one of the last things I want to show you is the new tab button. Now, as you notice, the tab bar is longer and bigger. All right, and if I want to do a new tab, uh, I just want to click plus button and create a new tab. All right, or command T. Uh, some of the same commands work for Safari 4 that were in Safari 3. Very, very helpful. So anyway, I'm here on Safari uh, 4. I've created two new tabs. As you see, I've got two tabs here. I'm going to go ahead and go to a website on this one, and I'm going to go to a website on this one. Let's say I'm watching a video on Hulu, alright, and I'm watching something, and I'm also doing something on an Apple website, just kind of browsing around, probably going to buy an iPod Touch or something, you know. So I'm on Hulu, I'm on the Apple website, let's say I want to take the Apple website and make it into this all window, alright, so pretty much what I can do, I can take the edge, drag it off, it becomes its own window, and now it's in its own window, and now I have two windows open. This is very, very helpful and very, very easy to do. Now, let's say I have two windows open, and I want to go back to two tabs. Here's what I can do. I can drag this tab over to here, and now it's one full window, but two tabs again. Now, I'm just pointing out some of the quick features in Safari 4. Uh, there are plenty more, and uh, plenty more thoughts that I have on this uh, web browser. Go ahead and view our uh, Macintosh Tips blog. 
to see the full review on Safari 4, how I rate it, and what I feel I like about it, and what I don't like about it. This has been Scooter with Macintosh Tips. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope I've kind of interested you in getting Safari 4. Peace.